Greetings, magical people. It's Afira here, the writing witch. And today's video is a fun journaling adventure. Today I'm taking you through the entire experimental process of creating a giant cover for my massive seasonal journal. If you've been watching this channel, you know that I like to create a junk journaling signature for each of the eight seasons on the witch's calendar. And this is my first time trying to put them all together and turn them into a book. This is not a detailed step-by-step -step tutorial. However, if you are not brand spanking new to crafting, chances are you can just watch what I'm doing and create something that is inspired and probably even more simple and easy for yourself. Either way, this is just a really fun art process video that'll probably be satisfying to watch even if you have no intention of doing what I'm doing here. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know about my seasonal journaling practice and you might be curious to see a little bit more detail into my journaling system. In that case, I invite you to watch this next intro section. However, if you have no interest in seasonal journaling and you just wanna watch a cool crafting video, then I recommend that you jump ahead to the timestamp that is now on the screen. So without further ado, let's make some magic. Greetings, magical people. It's Afira here, the writing witch. It is first thing in the morning, and I have decided that it's time. I just finished my last journal entry in my winter solstice journal signature, and it is time for me to figure out how to bind all of my seasonal signatures from the past year into one big book. Now, full disclosure, I have never done this before. I'm a little bit nervous and we're gonna do it though. I have a lot of experience with binding journals in general, but I have never attempted to bind like a big, thick, chunky group of signatures with all kinds of bits and bobs sticking out of them together after they've all already been written in and filled in. So if this is something that interests you, then I invite you to come along on this little adventure with me. Okay, so this is what we're dealing with. This is literally all needing to fit into one binder. Why am I doing this? Because I decided last year that I wanted to and now I'm gonna follow through with it. What we're looking at here is actually two, not one, but two journal signatures for each of the eight seasons on the witch's calendar. For some reason, I decided to take on the task of not only creating and journaling through a journal signature for the regular set of journal prompts for each of the Sabbaths, but I also decided to do the elemental journal prompts this past year as well because I was creating them and I wanted to experience going through the journal prompts before like really starting to promote it for other people. So I decided to do it all together. Some of these signatures have both sets of journal prompts but, uh, bound within them and others like the winter solstice ones have a different signature for the regular journal prompts and another signature for the elemental prompts. So I know I can do this. It's going to be a big, ethically ridiculous journal and let's just dive into it. So the first step is going to be, first of all, to put these in order. Okay, so I think I have these in order, but let's go ahead and confirm. And this will serve as a little mini show and tell of the system that I have going here so that you understand why I have them in this order. All right, so this is what we're dealing with here. 
This is my winter solstice entry from winter solstice 2020. And at this point, this was when I actually came up with the idea for these journal styles. So what you're seeing in here are journal prompts that I've actually been using for years and years and years, and I've taught courses using these journal prompts. But last year, I actually decided I wanted to create junk journals and printables associated with these prompts. Now at this point, there's only the regular like wheel of the year, winter solstice 101 stuff in this journal signature because it wasn't until, notice I'm flipping that that way because I want this to end up in the same order when I put them down, but it wasn't until February's Eve, which is what most pagans call in bulk, that I decided I wanted to also start journaling about the elements. So the winter solstice one from last year does not have an elemental signature until the end of the pile because that was what I did for winter solstice this year to sort of finish out the year. So moving on to February's Eve, I created the first set of prompts and then I created the second signature and I bound them together because I was just excited to see how that would look last year when I first came up with this idea. So this section is good to go. Spring Equinox, cool, cool, cool. That was the point when I started creating separate signatures and not binding them together just yet, knowing that I would do that at the end of the year. So you're kind of seeing what, what this looks like here. So I've chosen a different element to represent each season. So again, we have the winter solstice. That's the regular winter solstice journaling. At the very bottom here, we'll get to it, is winter solstice air element. So February's Eve being the cross quarter point between the winter solstice and the spring equinox would be the cross between two elements. And I chose for spring equinox, I had chose water. And so therefore the elemental focus for February's Eve was air slash water. So you see where we're going with this, right? So we've got the regular spring equinox journal prompts, the spring equinox water specific journal prompts, then we move on to regular May's Eve journal. And then we look at May's Eve as the cross between water and fire. Summer solstice, which I chose to represent fire. August Eve. And then August Eve, which I represented as fire slash earth. Autumn equinox. Autumn equinox as the earth element. November's Eve, and I think this is another twofer where I put them both together. Yep, so November's Eve was the representation of air crossed with earth. For some reason, I also put those together already. And then finally, we get to the one that I just finished journaling in, and that is the winter solstice represented by air. So that is the system, and now I just need to keep them in this order as I bind them together into a massive book. So I've decided I'm going to use a combination of probably some fabrics and some paper. So as you can see here, I have color coordinated bags of supplies on hangers here. And this one here has blue stuff, so I'm going to grab that. And then I also have this pile of different blue fabrics that I might wish to choose from as I am playing with this. All right, so I've narrowed it down to some materials here. I think I'm going to use this shiny cardstock here, which actually is the packaging for some other paper, but the packaging itself was really cool. So I kept that. I mean, this is going to be, this is a junk journal. So a lot of the items are just upcycled things. This was some actual cardstock that I don't know if you can see it has a little bit of a texture to it. I think this is what I'm going to use for the inside of the cover. And this is what I'm going to use for the outside of the cover. And then each one of these pieces of cardboard, I'm just going to line it 
kind of kind of like that. I'm gonna line it around the edges with a piece of fabric and then these will go over the fabric. So I've got a couple of piece of pieces of fabric that I'm considering here. And then I'm also considering this one here, which has pretty much the color scheme I'm going for, this sort of like blue and gold with a little bit of like neutral, nature-y sort of vibes going on in it. There's not a lot of this though, so I would have to be very careful about how I divided this up to make sure that I have enough. Um, let's see what I end up doing. And of course, Mowgli has found my pile of fabric and is very much going to sit here while I work. So I decided to go with this floral fabric, which apparently used to be a sleeve to something. Uh, all of the fabrics that I showed you today, I believe were part of this massive pile of just random scraps that someone gave me a few years ago. So yeah, some of them are literally, it was just part of a sleeve. What I'm gonna need to do is cut this into strips. I think each strip is gonna be about an inch and a half so that it can wrap around the side of each piece of cardboard and then be covered up by these other pieces of paper. All right, so we've got our fabric uh, strips here, and my next step is just gonna be to line the edges of the cardboard with the fabric. So I guess I'm gonna start with one of the neatest pieces I have here, and I'm gonna put it along this long edge and see how that goes. So I think to be smart <laughs> instead of Hasty, I'm gonna actually measure. Since I did make it an inch and a half, let's try and mark on here where the center of that would be, or what, what half of that would be on each side. So three quarters of an inch, which would be right there. All right, so we have our edged pieces of cardboard here. I've also cut these inside linings to the right size and I've marked on the cardboard pieces where I want to attach them. So this is where I get to decide how do I want to attach them. The simple option would be to take something like this tacky glue and just glue it on there. But something that I've discovered in my craft is that depending on what the paper is made out of, you can end up with like the texture of whatever line pattern you made with glue showing up, like kind of oozing through the glue. And that's not what we want. So a trick that I figured out is if you're using materials that you think will work on the sewing machine, which I know that this will because I've done it before, you can just glue just around the edges there and then there won't be any risk of like a glue pattern showing through on the main part of the page. And so that is what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to just take a sewing machine and I'm going to sew along those seams because that just makes it, first of all, it attaches it down better and second of all, it kind of looks cool. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now for all of these. So 
so now that this is glued on, I'm just gonna put like a heavy book on top of this to make sure that it stays pressed down in a flat position while it's drying for the next few minutes. So since I'm planning on doing a stitch going all the way around here, it just makes sense to try and make these just exactly the same size as these so that the stitch ends up going through both of them perfectly. So they're already pretty similar, but I'm just going to measure this out kind of roughly here just to make sure it is really, really close to the same size. All right, so here we go. We've got our fully sewn up pieces here. They look really cute. I like that they, if you look closely at them, they're still junky, you know, like there's this part where the fabric didn't quite fit and I kind of pieced it together and there's a little bit of a frayed edge going on. And, you know, in the spot, the, the thread didn't end up going through perfectly and that's okay like I like that it has this junky homemade vibe to it but unlike some junk journals out there in the world it still has like an overall neat simple clean cut looking style to it and that's kind of what I go for so from here the goal is simply to first of all create a piece of cardboard that's the same size as this little interior blue piece here. That is what I'm gonna be sewing the journal signatures onto and then I'm gonna glue that onto here. The other thing that's gonna to need to happen is I'm gonna to need to take some piece of fabric or something to connect these seams together right here so that this becomes a connected book. Okay, so I've gone through my stuff and I've decided I'm gonna use this gold ribbon as the connecting fabric between the pieces of the cover. I wanted to go with something that's like pretty sturdy because this is going to be a part of the book that like really holds the structure together and it's gonna kind of have the most stress on it. This is, admittedly, I would kind of like this to be a little bit thicker and more sturdy, but it's pretty darn thick and sturdy for a ribbon. And what's great about it is that it already kind of has its own seam, its own edges along the sides there. So I don't need to like go out of my way to like hem things and make sure that things are not going to unravel. So let's see how this works. So the little bit of hemming that I am going to do is just going to be along the edges of the ribbon here just because I want to make sure that that part is smooth. So I'm going to go do that and come back. Okay, so I'm back with some hemming here on my ribbons and you know what? Some of them turned out better than others but that's the joy of a junk journal. You don't need to feel pressured to make everything absolutely perfect. Just do the best that you can and it'll come together. So actually, now that I'm sitting down and looking at this at kind of an angle, 
there's kind of some gaps on some of the corners here. They just look kind of messy. I wouldn't really mind if they looked messy if not for the fact that the cardboard is visible. I would really rather the cardboard not be visible. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab some gold tape and I'm gonna make some little corner protectors and then I will come back and add my attachment pieces. And I'm actually thinking I'm gonna use these random scraps from other projects because that is the perfect use for them. So we've got our corner protectors. They're just made out of scrap pieces of tape. Better for the environment to use up as much of these like plasticky materials as possible instead of throwing them into a landfill. And it also kind of, it saves money and it, it's, it's easy to use for junk journaling. You don't go through as much materials when you know that you can use scraps instead of throwing them out. So anyway, the next step here is going to be to add the connector bits and I think I might want to actually cut these in half and use smaller strips but I'm worried that the material is going to unravel but I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to I think I'm going to put two rows of stitches on the sewing machine here and then cut between the two rows of stitches in order to prevent it from unraveling. So I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and do that, and then I'll be back. All right, that almost looks like it belongs there. Cool, cool, cool. So now that that is done, we've got our two thinner strips here, like what I did with these. I'm gonna put a light layer of hot glue just to hold this in place, and then I'm going to go to the sewing machine and run a stitch on it so that it's like really on there. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting the thin layer of hot glue kind of in the middle of this area of fabric, like not too close to the edge of the cardboard and not too close to the edge of the decorative paper because that's where the stitching is gonna go and I want to avoid having hot glue where I'm gonna be trying to sew. Um, a thin layer of hot glue shouldn't be a problem, but a, like if the layer of, of glue is a little bit too thick or if it's just too much in line with where the actual needle of the sewing machine is gonna go, it can cause problems. So I'm just making sure that I take that into account. So we're gonna go ahead and do this side and then we're gonna sew. We've just about got ourselves a giant book cover. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go sew these up and then we'll see what we've come up with. So the sewing was an epic fail. Unfortunately, it seems like my needle ended up having a reaction to just this really small piece of tape. And then it started getting stuck to the, like the thread started getting stuck to the needle and it created this horrible jumble, which I've had to like cut off. It's not good guys, it's not good. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to sew this by hand. Like I'm gonna, probably leave these pieces here and go over them with a layer of puff paint because that's how I tend to finish off my journals by adding a little metallic um, paint embellishment over any mishaps or anything that um, just looks raw and unfinished. And for these parts in particular, because I really want like, I want this to not be so floppy. I want that to like really be on there good. I'm going to go in with 
a needle and thread and that's going to take a few steps because I'm going to need to like punch holes in this with a larger needle first so that I can get the smaller needle through. It's going to be a whole thing. So I'm going to go have lunch and then we're going to tackle this. Ah, uh, glorious leftovers. All right, so I'm back from lunch, I'm feeling recharged, and I'm ready to tackle this journal again. So yeah, we're going to do some hand sewing, which I did not plan on doing for this, but you know what? I want this to be good, and I also just wanna to prove to myself that I can do this and do a good job with it, because the insides of this journal have been such a transformative experience for me, both creating them and marketing them, and thirdly, of course, using them and experiencing the magic of keeping a seasonal journal. And I want the outside of the book to justify what's inside of it or, you know, to to be worthy of it. So let's let's do this. We're going to finish this today, I think. All right. So I've got my piece of styrofoam, which I use to stick under things when I'm poking holes and stuff. And let's see, what do we want to use to stab the holes into it? Normally I use this one like to do the actual journal signatures here. Along the side there, I poke holes in the paper using this really big needle right here, but I feel like this is going to leave massive holes in my cover, so let's see, maybe, like this one, this is the one I'm going to actually use to sew, so I'm going to want something a little bit bigger. How about this guy? There we go. So that took a really long time and it was tedious so I wanted to kind of hunch over it and not worry about whether or not the camera was picking it up but if you look closely you can see like every two of the sewing machine stitches that worked for some reason on this section but nowhere else uh, I decided to punch a bigger hole and then I did another row along here so now I'm just gonna take a needle and thread and I'm gonna go along here loop around go all the way back and then we'll come back. To decide on a cover so this is the inside let's flip it to the outside this is the front I know it looks like they're all almost the same size but this is the front so we're gonna lay that flat 
and one mistake I used to make when I first started was like my brain wanted to tell me that that was the front and then I would do it backwards. Thankfully I haven't done that in a very long time. This is the front. So here are a few of my prints that I already have for journals that I create that are not big crazy junk journals. These are just some cover options. They're printed on some high quality cardboard or tag board here. And I already have a journal that has this whole design on it. It's my binder. And so I don't wanna do the exact same thing. I was thinking maybe I would cut this guy out and just stick him on here so that this shimmery sort of paper shines through. I was thinking maybe the same thing for this one. I kind of like the idea of this more delicate one going on there, but to be honest, it's gonna be a pain to cut the purple bits out of there and I don't wanna leave them on. So I think I'm gonna go for this guy. I think that makes more sense with the design. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut him out, glue him on, and then from there, all we're gonna do is take some gold puff paint and we're going to put a border around pretty much everything. All right, there we go. We've got our little sun guy here. We're not gonna use this stuff, but I am, again, this is this is junk journal haven in here. So we are gonna, of course, save this and possibly use parts of it for something else in the future. I'm just gonna stick this into, I guess, my blue bag, my bag of blue stuff, and we'll see what happens. All right, so this guy is gonna go here. I am gonna be a good, smart person and find at least find the center of this so that I have a good idea of whether or not that is centered. I would like it to be centered. So, or would I like to, would I like it to be up and have some kind of title there? Hmm, I don't know. It's a good question. I think I might put some text there. So never mind, I'm not gonna measure. I'm just going to decide where I want that to go and glue it down. on there pretty good. I think I might just write literally 2021 on here because ultimately even though I don't want them to be that tall ever again, I think I'm going to have some form of a seasonal journal situation happening every year. So it'll be cute to just have the title of the year right on front of each one. the front cover pretty much done. <gasps> oh 
why did I put 2,000? Oh my gosh, I'm literally losing my mind. All right, so I'm not done. I have to fix that while the paint is still wet, so it says 2021. I'm really not sure why I put 2000. I'm gonna go psychoanalyze myself now, but this is pretty much what this is gonna look like until tomorrow. I like to let this paint dry overnight before flipping it over and doing anything to the back, but the plan for tomorrow is gonna be to simply do the exact same thing to the other side that I did to this side, minus all of the decor. I will come back to you tomorrow with this dry and with that saying 2021. Seriously, what the heck? So here it is. I think it looks amazing. I'm really sad that I messed that part up. You can kind of tell it just, it's obvious that something happened there. And if you cover that up, like it, it would have looked so nice. So that's kind of a bummer. So our task for today is to just do something, anything to this to make it look intentional. And then Supposing that doesn't involve puff paint, which takes forever to dry, then I will be able to flip it over and just do the same sort of puff paint border situation around here, finishing off like those corners. You can like drastically see the difference between like how cool that looks versus how much like a piece of tape <laughs> that looks. So the puff paint really is the finishing touch. So I'm gonna do that today. And I'm going to tackle that pile. Here we go. it I think it doesn't look as cool as it did without the border but you know what it still looks good and the bad news is I did end up using puff paint which means this is gonna be pretty much out of commission for at least the next few hours I may cheat a little bit and just gently flip it over and do the painting on the back at some point this evening but in the meantime we're gonna go ahead and tackle the pages all right guys so real talk here i do not want anyone to do this like this is clearly out of control there's one two three four five six seven eight nine nine ten eleven twelve thirteen large signatures here and ultimately my program your book of seasons is designed for you to a skip all of this and just print binder pages that you can just hole punch and stick in a binder in chronological order and not be a crazy junk journaler at all or to make signatures like these but to make like let's let's show a reasonable size this one is a reasonable size make uh literally the idea is for you to make eight signatures this size for any one year, which would have you at a very normal size journal. It would probably be smaller than like the normal journals that I sell in my shop. But because it's me, I decided to go super crazy and I decided to make the massive book of craziness. So this video is kind of just going to be um, almost an example of what not to do, but at the same time, I'm going to show you that if I can do this with this absolutely absurd stack of pages, it'll be so much easier to do if you don't go nuts like I did. So I've got this 
piece of cardstock here. This is identical to the cardstock that is on the inside cover of the book. And this is already about the right height, so I'm gonna go ahead and just measure four, <laughs> measure four inches wide. And there we go, that is gonna be what we bind the pages onto. So here is what the standard signature side looks like for each of my journals. And what I've done is I've created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes for one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on here. I'm gonna measure it out so that there's 13 sets of seven holes that will correspond with the 13 signatures that each have seven holes on them. And then I'm just gonna open to the center fold of the book, wherever that is, and I'm just going to literally sew through those same holes again and into here. So it sounds simple, at least it sounds simple to me, but I have a feeling that the actual mechanics of this is gonna be nuts because it's a relatively small piece of cardboard with a bunch of huge, crazy journal pages on it. Anyway, guys, let's, let's get this done. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my marks on here. I've measured and seen that I can use the quarter inch marks to create 13 evenly spaced sets or rows of holes. And then the next step is just to mark where I'm gonna make those holes. So I always make them an inch apart when I'm doing my signatures. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mark out these quarter inch spaces here, just so I know that these are where my rows are going to be. All right, so we've got our lines. Now I just need to measure out inch spaces, seven inch spaces. So let's start with this first one here. And overall, this is just a little bit bigger than eight inches. So I'm just going to center that, center the ruler, and then we will mark this one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So there are our lines, and I'm just gonna do the exact same thing to each of the other rows. And now I'm just going to, I don't even know if you can see that. Yeah, so just at each of these, I realized I didn't need to make dots, but at each of these intersections, I'm just going to stab it with my big yarn needle and then I will have my board here all ready to go. So now I'm just gonna do the simple and hopefully easy task of attaching each journal signature. So one signature will go there, one will go there, and so on.
All right, so there we go. That is now attached. So you got the idea. This part right here will get glue on it and it'll go into the book. And, and that's what we're gonna do. So time to get into the next one. Alright, so I'm not filming every part of this because I would just, I'd be filming forever and I'd have way too much footage to deal with, but we have made the second row. So now we have winter solstice and then we have the February's Eve section both bound in. And now I've just got, what, 11 more of these to do? So I'll film part of it so you can kind of get a, get a visual of how this is fattening up. down and 10 to go. Would you like that jingle? <laughs> four of them done. So we've got the winter solstice, we've got February's Eve, we've got the spring equinox, we've got the second spring equinox signature for the element associated with it. Now we are moving over to May's Eve slash Beltane and yep there's two for this one. <laughs> there's two for this one. This one actually isn't this thick. I'm gonna temporarily take this chunk of pages out because here's the thing, part of the reason why these journals are so big is because I use them for multiple purposes. So I, I do the regular Wheel of the Year seasonal journal prompts, which there's four prompts for each season. And then I also do the separate set of journal prompts that is how you relate the themes of the season to one of the four elements, earth, air, fire, water, and then also, I use my journal like for other stuff too. So like this section is the responses to the journal prompts in a manifestation course that I'm taking. Sometimes I'll write the answers like right in any uh, extra pages that I might have in between of seasonal entries. Other times I'll put them on their own pages and then just tuck them in for the time period when I was doing them. Other times I will actually print out their workbook and tuck that in somewhere. So like there's just a lot of stuff going on in here. And I want to stress again and again and again, if you don't want to end up in this situation, you absolutely do not have to be putting this much stuff in your journal every year. Or maybe you could have totally different journals where like maybe you do your homework for one course in a different journal. Maybe you do your regular seasonal journal entries in one journal and then you do your, you know, elemental one somewhere else. Like you don't have to do it like this, but I like to do things really over the top sometimes and this is what we're ending up with. So I'm gonna put these, these homework assignments aside. There's dates written on them, so I'll know where to put them back in once this is done. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the regular Maze Eve one in first, and then I'm gonna put the Maze Eve Elemental in next. Six down and seven to go.
my gosh, you guys, it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. So, uh, this was, this was a lot. Um, I ended up realizing that originally I counted 14 rows and then I recounted before putting the holes in and I counted 13 ro rows the second time. Come to find out it was 14 rows. So now it's like smaller on this side than it is on that side because I had to add an extra row. Whatever, we're rolling with it. We're good. It's done. Holy crap. Look at that. This is insane. <laughs> okay, so. First things first, I am gonna go take a lunch break. I'm going to chill out, take a chill pill for a minute here, celebrate my successful binding together of this massive amount of pages. And then I'm gonna come back, I'm going to paint the puff paint onto the inside cover. And then it's still gonna be another day before this is done though, because I'm gonna have to let the inside cover paint dry before I can add before I can glue this into the spine of the book. But the hard part's done. We did it. Yay. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys, it's done. And by done, I mean the cover is done. The bound together signatures are done. This paint is wet. That actually looks really cool. I'm happy with the way this all came together. Other than that screw up I did on the front cover, I think this is really beautiful. And I love that I've used the gold puff paint along with the gold uh, ribbon here. It also kind of brings out the sort of what did look like greens in the fabric look are looking more golds now, which is good because like green wasn't really what I was going for for this cover, but I was okay with it because within the seasons we have pretty much every, co every color. But yeah, I'm loving this. I'm excited about it. I'm gonna let this dry overnight and tomorrow the final step is just to come back and glue that right there. All right, so here we go. We have the finished cover. This is the inside, this is the outside, and we are ready to take this massive thing right here. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> now all we have to do is get some kind of glue onto here and stick it onto there. So ultimately I would like to use a really strong super, uh, I would like to use a really strong hot glue on here. Sadly, the reason why I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that is because in the amount of time that it would take me to put enough glue onto here, the glue would cool and would no longer stick. So I think I'm just going to use tacky glue and I mean, ultimately, if this was a journal that was meant to continue being journaled in, I would try to come up with a better solution because I don't feel like this would hold very well for something that is actually actively being used. However, since this is not going to be actively used and I just need to get it to stick there, um, and it is going to be paper to paper, right? Like it's just some tag board and some tag board. And so ultimately I think tacky glue should get the job done. So I'm going to do that. And if for some reason in a year or whatever, if I feel like it's falling apart, I can try something else, but this is what we're going to roll with for the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this. And while I'm gluing this, I'm just kind of sitting here thinking like, how am I going to get this to hold in place while it's drying? Right? Like that's what I love about hot glue is that it dries pretty quickly and it has a really strong bond as soon as it dries. Whereas tacky glue really needs to be held into place for a while until it's dry. And honestly, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I wish I had some kind of 
brace or something that I could use for this, but it's like, why would I have, why would I have or create a tool for that when I've never had the intention of binding books that are this fat? And I honestly, I don't ever plan on doing this again. <laughs> this was a one-time thing. It was an experiment. And any journal that I make in the future, even if, again, it's like a year long thing with multiple signatures in it, I'm gonna be very cognizant of just how thick the book is getting and just do something different because as fun and interesting of an experiment as this was, let's be real here, this was absolutely ridiculous. So let's just make shift it for now and I will have learned a lot from this process. All right, it's very, uh, very technical and professional there. Some rows of tacky glue. All right, so before I flip this over, I need to quickly come up with a plan. How am I gonna get this to stay in place? Honestly, I have no freaking idea. I think, Okay, I think I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get some stacks of books. I'll be right back. So here's what we're gonna do. First of all, I'm gonna be smart and put some wax paper underneath the cover so that the puff paint doesn't stick to my desk. Uh, when, you've been in, when you've been in the business for as long as I have, you learn little tips and tricks like that. So I've made that mistake before. I'm not gonna make it again. So let's go ahead and just make sure that that is there okay next step is i'm gonna take these bookends these are heavy wooden bookends that i got from a thrift store and i am going to place that there there's another one here that i'm going to place right there afterwards and then i'm going to use books to hopefully weigh this down so that the surface of the glue is flat down to the cover Also, it's gonna be really important to make sure that this is placed exactly where I want it, which is exactly just right over the other panel here. All right, I think that placement is good. Just gonna put a little pressure there to make sure it's flat. Okay, and then I'm gonna put that there. All right, all right, that was actually pretty, <laughs> pretty successful. And then just to make sure that like this really presses down and the glue adheses, I'm just gonna put a stack of books on top, just like that. And there we go, that is what we're dealing with. All right, it's time. We're gonna take this crazy contraption and take it apart. All right, so at first glance, it is sturdy, it is stable. This is the right way up. Just gonna examine my work here a little bit. I mean, it's on there. It's, I, I doubt that would really go anywhere, especially knowing that this is relatively fragile and that I'm not gonna be beating this thing up. Like, I think we're good. <laughs> Look at that monster. Oh my gosh, okay, so one thing I'm just realizing I forgot to do in all the excitement is create a closure. So with all of my journals that I make and sell in my shop, they all typically come with ribbons so that you can just tie it closed because even if it's not a big, crazy, junky journal with stuff falling out of it like this one, I just think it is both cute and convenient to just have something that ties shut. So that is gonna be the last and final step and then we're done.
Yay! And then I for a, a different video, because this video is probably 12 min, million years long, but for a different video, we will go ahead and do an actual flip through of this. So, isn't that exciting? there it is it's the biggest craziest journal ever and yeah it's crazy I love it though I think this couldn't have possibly gone any better except for all of the random little mistakes that happened that were very annoying I didn't end up filming this but when I was getting ready to add little things that had fallen out back to where they belonged I realized that instead of putting my Autumn Equinox journal signature in there, I put one of the ones that was blank and was supposed to be in the shop. So I had to take the seam ripper really quick, cut it out, I just hot glued mine in there and it seems to be doing fine. But yeah, the only thing I'm going to do now, I'm just going to put some puff paint around those little stones there and that's all folks so let me know what you thought of this video i really had fun doing this it was a huge challenge i've learned a lot of things i will never make a journal this big again and i hope this was fun for you too so i will catch you in the next time until then blessed be